Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I've got the all new Diodora Speed Finale or Finale or I, I don't know, I got a really thick Pittsburghese accent according to literally everybody that's met me. So I'm sure I'm butchering it. All right, let's get into it. And with all these new tennis and pickleball shoes being dropped this year, if you are really confused on to what shoe you should buy, or if you're just bringing some ailment to the court that just has been nagging and haven't been able to get an answer from somebody or haven't been able to get on a plan that actually works, I am gonna be starting one-on-one -on -one consulting. I do have an email in the description below that you can email to. No, I won't spam you. It's just to get you on the early waiting list for that. Just if you need more information, more specific questions answered and an opinion on something that's been going on with you, or you're just trying to get answers something that maybe has perplexed your foot doctor or orthopedic surgeon that doesn't kind of live in this bubble of tennis, pickleball, basketball, and running that we all live in here in this channel. So if you do need answers to something or just want to talk through something, uh, email down below and I will get back to you once that calendar opens up. Now getting into the uppers of the finale, what I love about Diodora shoes in general, especially these, is that they are encased in just multiple layers. You get mesh as well as polyurethane going over the whole upper of the shoe. Now on these, you get a really thick casing around the medial side for even really extreme toe dragging on the top of your foot and you get mesh paneling on the top as well as lateral side. Now the one thing I did notice on these that is pretty crazy is just how thick the tongue is on these. There are actually two layers of bunting and padding. So I mean, when you lace these things down they are super plush and comfortable especially over your midfoot. The next thing I noticed is the heel counter on these things is so high backed but there's also a ton of padding on that high back there. So when you're lacing them down especially if you do a runner's knot that ankle collar and the heel counter in the back really does sink around your Achilles tendon. Gives you just a nice feeling of security in there and just kind of like a real glove-like or extension of your leg type fit. The one thing you do sacrifice though with all this bunting is breathability. Now on the breathability test, these heated up 179.5 degrees Fahrenheit. They cooled back down 90.2 degrees. However, this is a pretty significant heating. And you know, the mesh in here actually is pretty decent. However, when you have an upper that's half encased in polyurethane, you're gonna hold on to some heat, especially when the tongue is that thick. So I would say just make sure you're doing some of the techniques I've talked about before in keeping your feet and socks cool. I'll leave that video linked in the description below. And on the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds high script sandpaper, I mean, it almost gets through the toe drag guard, but not completely. And like I said, because it is so thick, it doesn't really matter. So if you are dragging and sliding really aggressively, still gonna do pretty well. And so for containment on the universal rating system, I'm gonna give them a four out of five. I love pretty much everything about the upper containment. The only thing I don't love is that the flange is not as wide. I think if the flange was a little bit wider, that would really complement the uppers. However, still very good. Now getting into the midsole teardown, this is an entire bed of EVA. It does feel super light and nimble underfoot, almost like the Adidas Dawn issue four in the basketball space with that construction of light strike. It's just super light, easy to move around, really nimble. Now the shank on these is externally loaded and it is a tread bridge. Same thing you've seen in like the Jordan 35 and 36 in the basketball space. What this does is it connects the forefoot and the rear foot tread, even though this is a continuous tread pattern. But what that does is it makes the shoe move more as one unit when it's bending and snapping. But the most important part about the midsole as well as the outsole of the finales is that it is winged in the posterior side. It actually comes with two wings here in the back. Now we see this a lot in running shoes with a more aerodynamics, a little bit more easy transition from step to step. Now on a lot of shoes, I really can't feel it. I almost feel like it's somewhat of a gimmick on some shoes. However, on the finales, you can actually feel it as soon as you put these things on step on court, you can actually feel that this thing is separated in the back. And when you are moving, it does give tremendous freedom when moving front to back, especially like serving and volleying or going side to side on a court, really trying to cover a large distance. This shoe does pick up and move really easily. And this is a very good implementation of a winged midsole and outsole. You may need to get used to it for a few minutes, so start off slow in them. But once you get used to the feeling in them, they do feel very quick and nimble. But looking at these on the jump height test, only got 17.5 centimeters on the jump height test. Remember the midsole is nice and light. However, the shoe in general is a pretty standard weight shoe. That shank isn't all that long, so there's not a lot of cantilevering in them. And that EVA just doesn't have the pop of some others because it is so light. So you're not gonna get that super elite jump height on these. And comparing that to the bounce height test, got 28.5 centimeters in the heel, 26.5 centimeters in the forefoot of bounce height. You know, it like I said, this just isn't the most elastic and bouncy foam out there. 
We'll see in the playability section why that's both a good and bad thing for certain players and why you may or may not want to buy them. Now looking at the outsole tread of the Finale, I mean, this is one of these, if it ain't broke, don't fix it with Diodora. Their treads are absolutely phenomenal. Now this is a multi-directional herringbone allowing you to slide under the big toe joint as well as grab on the lateral side. I absolutely love the break point here in the forefoot, gives it such easy bending. Plus the winged mid and outsole on the heel does save weight, makes it a lot more nimble from step to step. But the one blink and you'll miss it feature of the outsole tread is this really micro cobblestone pattern on all of the treads here, which gives a little bit more micro traction to the shoe. Now that is gonna wear down if you're sliding a lot. However, if you don't like to slide and want really hard grip, these are gonna grip into the court really well because number one, the herringbone's gonna grip on a macro level, plus that little cobblestoning is gonna grip on a micro level, giving you just a lot of options for gripping these shoes. And looking at the speed ratio, the Finale, they only come in at a 1.86, which honestly isn't the best we've seen this year. Not the worst, but not the best. These things really do well when you bring your own speed to the table and you wanna take better use of their nimbleness, light of footedness, the light midsole on them, and just kind of the ease of step to step. So for the right player, they're a very speedy shoe, but just don't expect a ton of launch capability from them, like with some other shoes. Now on the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 second highest grit sandpaper, I mean, not even a millimeter of damage. All it really did was buff out the cobblestones on there. See, the first thing that's gonna start to go, I think, is the midsole foam in the heel or in the forefoot because it does get kind of low there. So I would say though, in terms of sliding durability, upper durability to sliding, very good. And getting into the fit of the Finale, they look super streamlined. However, a narrow, medium, and wide width foot up to 2E, I think can just go true to size. I went true to size on these, had zero problems. Even fit with the length was really good. Uh, in terms of a 4E foot, I think you probably should be going up that one half size. I wouldn't really go up any further because you want to be able to use this break point kind of like in the B Icon and B Icon 2. It really gets you really easy fluid push off. The shoe gets too big, that break point then happens in your toes, and it just it doesn't really work very well. You really want it right where your toes bend at the metatarsals right at the ball of the foot, not any further up. And in terms of any ailments you might bring to the court, remember super padded tongue, high back heel counter, these will accept an orthotic really well. And I do think you need an orthotic in these if you do have any ailments. However, with that orthotic, pretty good. But getting into the playability of the Finale, honestly, a little different than some of the other Diodora shoes I've played in over the last couple years. They play a lot different than the Tornio, the Blue Shield 5s, and the B-Icons in that they are much more of that light, nimble type moving shoe that you really have to bring a lot more of the footwork skill and the speed to. Now, if you bring both those things to the table, these will reward you with such easy footwork, super fluid footwork. They're a much more fluid shoe than the Tornio. They're even a little bit more of a fluid shoe than the B-Icon because they don't require as much break in. They don't have as much going on there in the uppers. I felt that when I was like really kind of feeling my footwork, especially because it was a super windy day when we were playing, the wind was whipping in pretty much every direction. And I was still able to make so many little micro adjustments when I was playing, even when the wind made it almost impossible to get out of my own way and actually get an appropriate distance from the ball to try to hit in like a decent forehand or backhand. Um, I, I just really felt that these were kind of like the ultimate shoes. If you want the ultimate degrees of freedom in a shoe, but don't necessarily want to sacrifice in the upper stability of a shoe. So I do think they occupy a pretty specific niche in the market. I, I feel like the right player in these is going to just want to buy a hundred pairs of these and not get rid of them. I feel like with some other players, they might not like how low to the ground they feel and how they don't give as much of a launch as say something like the Tornio does or the B Icon does. I personally found these to be a great shoe to play and a lot of fun to play in uh, and something that I really felt like my footwork uh, really gelled with, like I said, especially in those really tricky conditions. And of course, love to know your thoughts on the Finale. I know I'm a huge Diodora fanboy in terms of tennis shoes and, and these are really no exception to me. Um, but like I said, I'd love to know kind of what your thoughts are. You know, are you going more with the Tornio, the Tornio 2, the B Icon, the B Icon 2? Were you willing to kind of give something like this a try that's a little bit more out of the box in terms of footwork and in terms of performance? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see the other really speed focused, fluid type shoe that just came out on the market right now, the Adidas Cybersonic. Make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you in the next one.